Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. I hope you're all doing well. Not all projects need to be big multi-million dollar or six-figure projects in order to incorporate spray foam. It doesn't have to be a commercial building or a mansion that someone's building or something exotic. That gets a lot of the attention. But where I really like to focus is on retrofits, especially for projects that were built a long time ago with poor building materials and now they're being retrofitted they're up being upgraded and this is a perfect example of that this is low income housing and it's a fourplex and out of the fourplex you've got two end units and two middle units and out of the two middle units there's only a front wall and a back wall that line up with the outside so we were contacted uh, to do a first trial unit uh, for these people where the homeowners or home tenants were moved out and the entire structure was gutted as you can see and then we came in and do spray foam insulation now they had had uh two by four walls still have it and paperback bats the building was built in the 1950s and it, it just was horrible i mean it was the best that they could do in that day there was no vapor barrier there was no continuity uh, there was no depth to get any additional insulation in. The, the units are very small, a couple hundred square feet of footprint per size. So in this situation, spray foam is perfect. Gut the 2 by 4 walls out, get rid of the paperback bats, fix up any structure, upgrade the electrical where need be, upgrade the plumbing where need be, and then we did a 2-inch closed cell spray foam application. Now you might ask, why not do more? Why not go to 3 inches? The reason being is that in that chart that's in my other videos how much spray foam do i need you will see that a two inch application of closed cell will retain 86 percent of the heat and three inches will retain 90 percent so there is no need to go to that extra inch incorporate a lot more shaving a lot more cleanup a lot more labor and a lot more cost for the end user to gain four percent the other thing that I like with the spray foam is it adds structural support to the walls. Even though these old buildings were fairly well built, uh, time and degradation start to set in for all structures. And so it's just really good to get the closed cell foam in there and get the structural support. This will make for a warm building. There's only two outside walls in this particular unit and they're going to notice an immediate night and day difference for the unit downstairs, the unit upstairs that we're able to retrofit. So I like doing these kinds of projects. Even though they're not large and glamorous, it showcases exactly what the spray can do. Get things sealed up, get things structural, better, better structure, closing things up, and then have a perfect air seal or as close to a perfect air seal and this is this is modern as tomorrow this unit would never will perform as well as it does now the rest of its life for this unit and it's really good to get this type of product into the lower income housing units a lot of times people say well it's low income housing we have to go with cheap products and I disagree I really believe that we need to be putting better insulation better envelope structures into the lower income housing so that they're not wasteful so that they last longer so the tenants are in better shape uh, thermally and they don't have as many mold as much mold and mildew that you would see in common structures with inferior products uh, that have just been installed hastily because after all it's low income housing who really cares and they're not receiving higher end quality installation a lot of times so if you like this video, click the like, uh, click the subscribe, stay tuned. I've got many more videos coming up. We've got some really neat projects coming on this summer. And I think you're going to be wanting to see what we've got in store. Enjoy.